Okay, so this is the last video for this week. And in this video, we're going to look at one method to find the gradient function or the derivative of the y dx or f prime of x, meaning the same thing. And we're going to look at ways to find the derivative of polynomial functions and power functions. This should be a recap of last year's. I also didn't have any meme on this topic, so here, here, here's a polynomial. Um, okay, so the derivative of power and polynomial functions, just keep in mind that power and polynomials, probably something along the line of x to the power of n, so looking at anything from um, parabolas, which is like x squared, and then cubic, but then you also look at uh, hyperbola, which is 1 over x, which can be written as x to the power of negative 1, or truncus, 1 over x squared, which is x to the power of negative 2. Square root function is another example of a power function, so that's x to the power of half, and then cube root and things like that. So any rule that can be written in the form of x to the power of n, for n being a rational number, that is going to um, apply to this formula to find the derivative. So this is the way to find the derivative of x to the power of n. d dx of x to the power of n is n times x to the power of n minus 1. So you're doing two things here. You multiply by the power. You did this last year. Hopefully you remember. Multiply by the power. And then after you multiply by the power, you reduce or subtract the power by 1. Do we say reduce? Yep. Subtract 1 from the power. That's it. This formula is actually given to you for board exams in the formula, I was going to say booklet, but it's not, the formula sheet, 1 from the power. End of story. Now go do three exercises. Um, all right, I'm going to give you a few examples, I think, but it, it's really not that hard. So let's go through three I'm going to give you 10 examples and see whether I can cover every possible case. I probably can't, um, but most of the cases with the three examples. So this is the first one. First of all, this is not the derivative. This is the function. So if the question asks you to find the derivative, you need to write dy dx equal to. So please, for the love of God, don't just say equal to because the function and the derivative are two different things. Sometimes they're equal to each other, but most of the time they don't. They're not equal to each other. Okay, so recognition. I can see that there is x here, and then it has a power, so it's going to fall under this rule that we just learned again. So I want to derive this. I just need to multiply with the power, so that's the 3. I'll bring the power down, um, times x, and then reduce the power by 1, so 3x squared. Well, that's anticlimactic. Example 2. So you have another one here, so then we have dy dx. So if you have three expressions, then the derivative will just be the sum of them. So if you have a sum, when you have to derive the sum, you just derive each term in the sum. So the first one, bring the power down or multiply with the power. So 2x, 2x will have 1, which is 2x. Um, this is good because if you just have 3x, essentially 3x is 3x to the power of 1. So you bring the power down, you have 3 times 1, which is just 3 x to the power of 0. And then if you if you have a constant, you can think of a constant as 5x to the power of 0. So if I multiply 5 with 0, then there's nothing left. Now this is, looks really ridiculous, so you can just write it as 2x plus 3. So we can go back and update our rule um, if, you have, if you're deriving a constant, it's just equal to 0 for a is a constant. But you can think of it as um, you know, just an extension of what we just looked at here. Okay, example two, that's example two. Example three, so this is not a sum, this is a product, so there are two things multiply together. There is another way to do this, but I haven't told you that yet. So at this point, if you see this, you need to expand the bracket so that you convert it from this form back to what example two looks like, which is a sum of terms. So I'm just going to expand this, should get x squared minus x minus two. And then you can derive. So this is the y, but the derivative is going to be, so multiply by the power, so 2, and then reduce, so 2x to the power of 1, which is 2x. This is 0, so just minus, there's a 1 here. Sorry, that's not 0, that's 1. So minus 1, and then derivative of negative 2 is just 0. So derivative is going to be 2x minus 1. 
you're going to get really good at this very quickly. That's example four. Okay, so similarly, there is a shortcut to do this, but I haven't told you. So the other way, again, is you have to expand so that you have a sum of terms again. So this is x cubed. I can't remember how to do this. Um, 6x squared plus 24. I may have made... Oh, that's cute. Okay, it's not 24. Um, 12, 12, 12. 12x. I may have made that up. No, I think that's right. Okay, plus 8. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Am I, did I expand things correctly? 3x, 3 times 2. Yeah, I think so. So you have the derivative. Um, so multiply with the power, reduce it. So 3x squared, 6 times 2, 12x plus 12. There you go. So that's the derivative. That was easy. Uh, oh, life is more exciting. Don't be intimidated when you see something like this. If you understand index law, you could convert this back into this expression. So all you need to do is just be careful. The three stays, the constant three, but I'm going to write x to the cube root into x to the power of a third. It does mean the same thing. So that now, if you look at this, it is identical to this rule, which is x to the power of n, or n being a third in this case. So I can derive, hang on, where do I put six? Okay, so on the other side. So dy dx is going to be, so I'm going to multiply with the power, so 3 times a third, and then I subtract 1 from the power. So you just need to know how to deal with fractions, which I guess is not easy. Okay, so 3 times a third is 1, so that cancels out well, and then that's going to be x to the power of negative 2 third. If the question doesn't ask you to rationalize or do anything else, I would just stop here. You could write it as 1 over x to the power of 2 third if you want, but again, if the question doesn't ask you to have every answer with positive powers, you, you can. This, this is a perfectly good place to stop. Okay, similarly, when you have something like 6, the, the rule is always try to convert the question back into this expression. So you, you don't want x in the denominator, and you, you don't want any third. You basically want x to the power of something. And you just need to use index law to do that. So I'm going to simplify. So the first thing I will do is I'm going to convert the third into um, x to the power of a half. Okay. And then, um, let's hope I have enough room. I think I will. And then I'm going to use index law to simplify these two into one term. So 2 plus a half. Don't write 2 and a half. It's not helpful. Uh, 5 over 2 is much better because you can then um, subtract 1 from it more easily. Actually, no, you can subtract two and a half, but multiplying. And then I'm going to bring the, um, the the x up. So five times x to the power of negative five over two. So now you have convert, converted the expression back to something very similar to this form. And that should make it easy for you to derive. So dy dx. So you just multiply. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip steps and then someone will be upset. So let's try not to do that x of negative 5 over 2 take 1. Okay, so that's negative 25 over 2, x to the power of negative 7 over 2. So once again, you don't have to put a x in the denominator unless the question specifically asks for it. I'll just stop here because I can't be bothered. All right, this one. So very similar to 5 and 6, except you just have two terms. So you have to do the same thing for both terms. You want to convert it from whatever the, whatever form it is right now into x to the power of n. So I'm going to bring the x squared to up, so it's no longer the denominator. So that's negative x squared. Um, sorry, negative x squared. x to the power of negative 2. So it is actually 1 times x to the power of negative 2, but you can't ignore the 1, of course. So that's why it's just x to the power of negative 2. This one I'm going to write as x to the power of a half. Okay, so that's y, and then you can derive, and then so multiply with the power, so negative 2x to the power of negative 3, because you're subtracting 1 from it, multiply with the power, so 6 times a half is 3x to the power of negative a half, okay, this looks so wrong on so many levels, but it's not, you could, of course, write it as negative 2x cubed plus 3 square root of x. So, I mean, if this is a multiple choice, and I think this is probably, this looks nicer. That's all I'm going to say. 
All right, then we have something like it. Again, don't freak out. There is um there is a formula that you can use later on to differentiate um well a quotient or the division of two things, but you don't have to do it here. Once again, you want to convert this into this form because right now you can't you can't derive the numerator and then the denominator. We don't do that yet. So what I want what I think you should do is you want to break this fraction into three fraction. And then you should be able to simplify the terms. I think I'm going to run out of room if I write this big. So let me just make it smaller. So x cube over x plus x over x minus 3 over x. OK, so this already looks a lot better because I could simplify the term. So x cube over x is just x squared. x over x is 1. And I'm going to write negative 3, minus 3 over x as minus 3x to the power of negative 1. So the negative is on the 3, so it shouldn't go away just because you put the x from the denominator up. This looks fine. I can derive now. It's just going to be a sum of three different derivatives. So bring the power down. So 2x, the derivative of 1 is 0. I'm just going to write 0 here so you know where it went. And this one, so negative 3 times minus 1 is 3. x to the power of negative 2, because you just subtract 1 from the power. Um, so 2x and 3 over x squared. You, can, you don't necessarily have to put x in the denominator again, but that's the answer. So 9, very similar. I'm going to do the same thing as I did for 8. So I'm just going to go x cubed over x squared. Once you get very good, you can skip this step and just go straight to here. But anyway, minus 4x over x squared, minus 8 over x squared. I think I say that a lot. Once you get very good, you can skip this step and then no, nobody ever get skipped the steps. Um, and then we have y go to x minus 4. All right, because, well, should we skip this step? 4 over x. No, let's not. 4 over x minus um, 8 over x squared. Now I'm going to bring anything that's on the denominator up so minus 4x to the power of negative 1 minus 8x to the power of negative 2 and then you can derive or find the derivative or whatever you want to say plus 4x to the power of negative 2 uh, plus 16x to the power of negative 3 and then I'm just going to put the, the thing on the denominator because this thing looks really weird for me but you don't have to do it so that's the answer either form is phi last but not least is this one so my advice to you is when you have x square root of x, it's probably better to, well, it depends on the situation. But in this case, what I'm going to do before I simplify is I'm going to write the denominator as um, x to the power of 3 over 2. So that's 1 and then a half. So you add them together using index law, you get this. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to split the fraction into th three fractions so 2x squared over x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 3x over x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 7 ooh, over x to the power of 3 over 2 okay now this is where things go wrong and mainly it's a fraction issue it's not really a calculus issue so 2 subtract 3 over 2 is a half minus 3, this is going to give you negative a half. And this is 7, x to the power of negative 3 over 2. I just brought the denominator up. And then you can derive. You just need to be careful with algebra. Um, x to the power of negative a half plus 3 over 2, x to the power of negative 3 over 2, uh, minus 21 over 2. Oh my god, that looks like a 4. 21 over 2, x to the power of negative 5 over 2. I hope this goes into the screen. That's it. I'm not going to touch that anymore because it looks disgusting. But anyway, I really should have made more room for question 10. That's all. Go do your questions.